Julie Ryan, noted psychic and medical intuitive, is ready to answer your personal questions, even those you never knew you could ask. For more than 20 years, as she's developed and refined her intuitive skills, Julie used her knowledge as a successful inventor and businesswoman to help others. Now, she wants to help you grow, heal, and get the answers you've been longing to hear. Do you have a question for someone who's transitioned? Do you have a medical issue? What about your pet's health or behavior? Perhaps you have a loved one who's close to death and you'd like to know what's happening. Are you on the path to fulfill your life's purpose? No matter where you are in the world, take a journey to the other side and ask Julie Ryan. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and I'm so delighted you could join us. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all around the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. And comfort all around the world sounds like it's needed these days, you guys. We are in the middle of the COVID-19 or coronavirus pandemic, and many of you who are listening are being affected by this in a multitude of ways. So my heart goes out to you, and I hope that you are following your guidelines from your governments and uh, doing what they're saying. Here in the U.S., most of us are self-quarantining in our homes and not being in big groups. I wrote a blog last night that I wanted to share with you first because I think it it can give us some, um, just a little pointer from a really special lady that I knew. And I think the timing is just perfect for it. So I'm going to start out with this, and then we'll go to our callers. And basically, it's about a woman named Countess Vera Teleki, who was the mother of one of my best friends, Judy. She is, had died about 10 years ago, the Countess did. She was an Austrian citizen, forced to flee her homeland during World War II. And uh, she had three small children when she went to Budapest. The story on her is she was married to a man named Paul. He came home one evening, and he was part of the underground resistance for the Nazis. They were very affluent. And he said, I have been found out that Gestapo is going to come get me in the morning, and the only thing I can do to save you and the children is to commit suicide. So they discussed it all night for the rest of the night. Can you even imagine discussing that with your husband? And he, she said, but I don't know anything. And he said, yeah, and that's the only way I can think to save you and the kids. So when the Gestapo arrived early the next morning, he jumped out of a fifth-story balcony and he killed himself in the middle of Vienna. They had a, a um, condo, probably a townhouse thing in Vienna. And so for the next two years, you guys, she was picked up by the Gestapo weekly, taken for interrogation, and they would torture people in front of her to try and get her to talk. Well, she didn't know anything. So long story short, she um, had this Gestapo agent that was her was assigned to her for all these years, and he fell in love with her. She was gorgeous. And he got her, he smuggled her out of... Um, Austria, out of Vienna, got her on a train to Budapest, and she and the three little kids got there. She had absolutely no money. The next day, when she got to a hotel, she, she talked her way into staying in a hotel in Budapest. The door, there was a knock on the door, and there was somebody in a, in a trench coat that handed her a brown paper bag, and in it were a bunch of, of her family's jewels that had been stolen with a note from her Gestapo agent, and he said, use these sell these and use these to buy food and whatever else you need. So then she got a job at a hospital, and she meets the Count Charles Teleki, who had three children of his own, and they went on to have two more children. So they fell in love. They got married. After a couple of years, the Nazis invaded Hungary, where they were now, and overtook the Teleki's castle and estate. Now, I saw pictures of this, everybody. This is a serious castle. It was 100 rooms on 6,000 acres. And the, the Nazis let them live in three rooms. When the Allies defeated the Nazis and the Russians moved in, the combined family was forced to leave their home, their wealth, and all of their possessions. They left with the clothes on their back, with eight kids, mind you. And they immigrated to Canada and settled at a dilapidated farm outside of Toronto because that's all they could afford. 
So her World War II experience, the Count Tele Countess Teleki, her World War II experience was so horrific that it made the Von Trapp family memoirs look tame. Now that's the story that The Sound of Music was based on. So when I asked the Countess how she coped with the toughest of times, she said, I go outside. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And she said, when I walk outside and I see the trees and the breeze and the grass and the mountains and the flowers and all of that, she said, it's a constant presence. And I know it's always going to be here. And so as a result, she said, it gives me peace. And it allows me to know that everything's going to be OK eventually, and we'll get through this. So in this time that we're all going through, I thought, OK, I, I want to know if there's any kind of scientific information about going outside and walking around. Because it worked for the Countess. I feel better when I get sunlight. And it turns out that the ultraviolet light from the sun has potent healing properties. There's a, a scientist named Joseph Fair. He's a PhD. He's a virologist and an epidemiologist. And he says sunlight is nature's greatest disinfectant because it's ultraviolet light inactivates bacteria and viruses. And in addition, many studies have shown exposure to sunlight increases vitamin D levels, which enhances the, the immune system, and raises serotonin levels, which helps us avoid depression. So when you're feeling overwhelmed, do what the Countess Teleki did. Go outside. Look at the trees, plants, and flowers. Breathe fresh air. Get some sunshine. And let nature help you disinfect yourself and feel better. And I know some of you are in climates that maybe don't have a lot of sun. Even if it's cloudy, even if it's raining, get your clothes on, get your raincoat on, get your boots on, get an umbrella, and go outside and walk and it's going to make you feel better. So I just, I was inspired to share this story of the Countess Teleki with all of you. My friend Duty, when I met her, I, and I met her mom, she was visiting, and I said, my god, some of the stories I've heard about your World War II experience, you need to write, this, write a book or something. And she said, she looked at me, you guys have been trying to get her to write this story for years. She looked at me and she said, would you help me do it? And I said, sure. So for the next three weeks, every night, my friend Duty lived in my neighborhood at the time, I went to, to Duty's house and we recorded, I interviewed her, and we recorded it, this was over 20 years ago, on an old-fashioned tape recorder. And then I had all those tapes transcribed. It was about 700 pages. And I went up to her farm in Canada to see pictures of everything. And I hope the family, and then I gave it to the family as a gift. So I hope that they do something with it uh, at some point. She wanted to wait until she was gone before they did anything with her life story. But she was such an extraordinary woman, and I was just led to share that story with all of you. It's so honored, you can imagine, that she picked me to tell her story to. I was like, oh, my God. It was fabulous. So go outside. It'll make you feel better, and it's going to disinfect you at the same time. All right. With that, let's go to the phone and see who we have on the phone phone with us. First, I believe it's Liz Carlisle. Hi, Liz. Hello, Julie. Hello, hello. How are you, girl? I'm doing good. Despite everything going on, I love that story. Isn't that something? The, the pictures yeah. that I, I even saw, the scepter, the family scepter, they smuggled it out from behind the Iron Curtain, behind yeah. you know the communist lines. And it's this orb that's encrusted in rubies and diamonds. It was oh amazing. And I, wow. saw, I saw a couple of her tiaras that had been smuggled out too. Somebody, after the war was over, they had a bunch of this stuff hidden, and somebody was able to go get some of this stuff and somehow get it to them in Canada. But it, wow. yeah, it really was remarkable. So wow. everybody, Liz has a show. She's got a mom podcast, and I was on it, what, a couple weeks ago, Liz? Yeah, yeah, about three weeks ago, um, one of our highest rated shows, unsurprisingly, I think everybody wants to know about how to enhance their own psychic abilities, and Julie was just so generous with the information that she shared. I mean, everyone listening, I'm sure you already are well aware of her gift, but I think my audience was really amazed. And then I, I referred you to a friend of mine who also has another show, and she's over the moon about you, too. 
Oh, good. Well, tell everybody a little bit about you and a little bit about your show. Yeah, thank you. Um, so my show is called Motherhood Unstressed, and it was really born out of my own need to kind of figure out my own experience of motherhood uh, and heal and, and just become a better person, a better mother. So it's been out for about two and a half years now, and um, it's just been incredible. You know, I've had an amazing guest like Julie, and we talk about health, and we talk about motherhood, and we talk about mental health, and it really runs the gamut. But I think it always comes back to what are the things that you can do in your life to make your experience on this earth better and more fruitful. Right. And, and I know a lot of you that listen to this show are moms with little kids. So Liz's show is just terrific. Where can they find the show? Where can they find you? What's your website? So they can yeah, look you so up. If you, yeah, if you look up Motherhood Unstressed, that will lead you right to the website. The podcast, anywhere you listen to podcasts, just search Motherhood Unstressed. It's all there for you. Okay, terrific. And you and your little ones are doing well in Atlanta? Yeah, I mean, I, I've always worked from home, and my husband has too this past year, so it hasn't been a major change for us. You know, the kids were getting home at 3 anyway, so I was used to getting up early and just kind of knocking out work. Now I'm just adding in homeschooling, so <laughs> that's been interesting. But, you know, we're, we're kind of rolling with it. We're kind of rolling with it, so wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Everybody, check out Liz's podcast. I think you'll enjoy it and her site. Thank you so much. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. Let's see who's next. I believe our next caller is Mary. Hi, Mary. Hey, Julie. I'm calling in tonight from Minneapolis. Well, wonderful. What's happening up there? You're not in <laughs> snow, aren't you? Uh, well, it, there is some coming tonight in the forecast, a possibility, and I just checked oh, the highs for tomorrow are in the 20s, low 20s Fahrenheit. But oh, it's, no. as is this situation, the weather's temporary. It's always changing. Exactly. exactly. So I know there are a lot of callers, so I just want to get to my questions. I am a student of Julie's, and I am really loving this work. I'm using it every day. I was a student in the second class that you teach. I don't know if you plug that on your show, but it's awesome, everybody. You should check it out. Angelic Attendant Training. Anyway, I was wondering, as a medical intuitive, have you seen anyone who has coronavirus? And, it, and what does it look like if you have, or what do you, if you haven't, what do you think it would look like through your eyes? I have. Actually, I saw my first person that had it today. I haven't scanned anybody that I've heard about in the news, but I, I spoke with someone whose daughter has it today. And okay. virus, it looks like a normal virus, Mary. It, viruses look to me like watery beef broth, and they're liquid, versus a bacterial infection has a hot pink energy to it, almost a fuchsia color, but more on the okay. pink side than the purple. And okay. so I... Push it out through the top of the head. So it looks like watery beef broth. Great question. Okay. Um, and then I'm wondering if I could ask a favor. And I'm not sure, sure if you have. I've heard you on other interviews because you've had a lot lately, which is wonderful for all of us. Um, would you be willing to share your two-minute rule? Just a reminder of the two-minute rule and how it works when we get in overwhelm and all is, you know, we're in our state of woe and can't seem to find our center. Yeah, great question, too. Okay, so what Mary's talking about, everybody, and some of you may have heard heard this before, I came up with this, I call it a trick, but it's really a technique. I should probably call it a technique, Mary, oh. don't you think? Instead of a trick. <laughs> but Sounds classy. But here's how it works. When we have two emotions that we feel, one is either based in love, the other is based in fear. So anything that feels bad, panic, anxiety, fear, depression, anger, whatever, that's all based in fear. Everything that feels good is based in love. So when we have an emotion that feels bad, that's our spirit that's based in love. Our spirit is pure love. That's our spirit telling us we're out of alignment. And so how we can feel better and get into alignment is we ask this question about whatever we feel badly about. There are two kinds of fear. There's rational fear, something's going to kill you if you don't change the condition, and there's irrational fear. Irrational fear is everything else, and guess what? It's fake news. We make it up. So here's the trick. 
when you're feeling badly, you say to yourself, is this going to kill me in the next two minutes? <laughs> if it is, if you're in the middle of the street and there's a truck coming to hit you, you better get out of the street. <laughs> so that's a rational fear. Anything that isn't going to kill you in the next two minutes is irrational. You're making it up. And so as soon as you go to curiosity, it changes the frequency of the thought because our heads are big satellite dishes. They receive and transmit information. And when we're having a thought, the thought's originating outside of our head, and it's like we're tuned to a radio station. So if you're having a thought, oh, my God, what if I get coronavirus? Is it going to kill me? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and you're down this mm -hmm. deep hole. You ask yourself, I call it the two-minute rule, Mayor. I say, are you going to, is this going to kill me in the next two minutes? And then you're usually going to laugh. And you're going to go, no, it's not. And as soon as you ask that question, you've broken that channel, you can go to a different channel. And then okay. the next question is, how is this benefiting me? Even if it's benefiting you in it's pointing out an irrational fear, that's benefiting you, right? Right, so, that on its own. The good There's, thing about the two-minute rule is it's free. It's convenient because you can use it wherever your brain is. Your brain's usually with you wherever you are, right? <laughs> and it works in any situation. You know, you're in line in Costco and you've been in line for an hour. And you're like, oh, my God. And then you say, is this going to kill me in the next two minutes? No, it's not. How's this mm. benefiting me? It's pointing out a limiting belief. How else is it benefiting me? I'm going to eventually get in. I'm going to buy what I need. You know, all this stuff that we make up and we get anxious and fearful over, the vast majority of it never happens. And so we're stressing out over stuff we're making up. So mm. is that a good enough explanation, Mary? Does that help? It is really helpful, especially right now with everybody going through so many things. So thank you, Julie. Thank for you. This and all that for you do. calling in. You bet. Well, Great. you stay, stay warm up there and bundle up and go get out in the sun tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks okay. again. Bye. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. All right, let's see who's next. I believe it is Miss Kimberly. Kimberly, i got to find you. Let's see. Where are you? Here you are. Okay, Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi how are you, Julie? I'm well. How are you? Oh, I'm well. I'm so incredibly grateful to be speaking with you right now. Oh, wow. Where are Thank you calling you. from? I'm in San Diego. Okay. What's Ooh, going on? I touch my breath. Um, I am calling, like I said, with immense gratitude in my heart to have first found you and to actually be speaking to you so um, whew, um I'm calling on behalf of my daughter mm -hmm. she is uh, eight years old her name is Grace mm -hmm. and she's um, the love of my life yeah. um, my little girl she's the center uh, of your universe right that's what is. I say about Jonathan he's the center of the universe <laughs> she is yeah. absolutely yeah. Um, when Grace was four and a half years old, she was diagnosed with Crohn's colitis. Okay. And um, we have been told basically that it's almost like catching lightning in a bottle for someone her age mm -hmm. to have such a diagnosis. Um, mm -hmm. And we have spent the last three and a half years um, trying every modality known to mankind, every energy healing, spiritual healing, homeopathics, naturopathics, Western medicine, um, surgeries, and we are still struggling. And I'm, I'm hoping you can help. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, Kimberly, is I'm going to raise my vibrational level to the level of spirit. I'm going to watch a laser beam come from my body here in Birmingham, Alabama. It's going to hook into you in San Diego. From you, I'm going to go to Grace. I'm going to ask her permission if I can scan her. She says, yes, I will. If she says, no, I won't. Because I can, but I just won't. I don't think it's ethical. It's an invasion of privacy in my book. So here's no, my I understand. Beam. Yeah. And, uh, and if, she, if she says no, we can still ask her questions. 
and okay. we can we can get information from her spirit. I don't worry about that because I figure this person's not going to tell us what it doesn't want us to know, right? So mm. I don't I don't believe that's an invasion of privacy. It's like having a conversation with somebody. Okay, got you, got Grace. Grace, I'm talking to your mommy. She went smooth skin you energetically. Is that okay? She said yes. Wow, I'm impressed. Most little kids say no. All right, <laughs> so. I'm shooting energy from her feet up through the top of her head. She's full of inflammation, Kimberly. Inflammation looks like red fog over body parts. So I'm calming that down with anti-inflammatory energy, which is a royal blue color. I'm getting that calmed down. And then I can get underneath it and see what's going on with her. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, it's like she's got... Um, there's there's toxins in her blood is what I'm seeing. I'm not normally with colitis and and Crohn's and you know and things like that. I'll see certain areas of the body lit up. Hers are toxins in the blood. So I'm just gonna we're just gonna see what we can do to what I what I'm watching is a DNA healing. All right. This is DNA healing is I see a chromosome come out from her, a little X, like a big X for her. It's almost the size of her. There are three strands of DNA that have come out on the side. Imagine they look like pieces of paper that you find in a fortune cookie. They have okay. four letters, sequences of four letters, ATCG. They represent nucleic acids. I'm watching those letters get rearranged in warp speed. They're correcting a mutation that could be hereditary, it could be, it's most likely an environmental thing that's oh. happened. And, okay. and when we get different illnesses, it changes our DNA. So this mm -hmm. healing re reconfigures the DNA, and what I'm watching in my mind is those letters get moved around really fast. Like, imagine playing Scrabble and warp speed. You right. know, where the letters are right. up and right. over and being, and when that strand is, is um, corrected. It's snapping back in. Okay, the fourth one is finishing. It starts to slow down like a train coming into the station. You know, I can see when it's getting ready to snap back in. Okay, that one's in. Chromosomes back in her body. That's down. I would suggest, has she been to see a functional medicine doctor? Kimberly? Functional medicine. Yeah. Functional medicine doctors look at the body as a whole and they reverse engineer symptoms. I would get her to a functional medicine doctor. If you go to IFM, like Institute yes. for Functional Medicine org, yes. or functionalmedicine.org, there's a bunch of them in Southern California. Oh. I, I would get her seen by a functional medicine doc. Okay, I will do that. And thank you so yeah. much for your thank you so You're much for welcome. your time and your work. You're All welcome. Right. Hang in there. Get her outside. You go outside too. Absolutely. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Take Thanks, care. Julie. Bye, Kimberly. Bye-bye. Okay. okay. Let's see who's next. I believe it's Miss Patty. Miss Patty, i got to find you here on my list. Giving you some warning here. I'm coming. I'm coming looking for you. Uh, Miss Patty, there you are. Hi, Patty. Hey, uh, Julie. How are you? I'm good. Tell everybody where you're calling from, please. Queens, New York. Queens, how are you holding up? You guys are in really serious lockdown up there, aren't you? Yeah, I know, and I'm scared. Crap, I'm scared. Shh. Yeah. Some of okay. some of my job tested positive for the coronavirus, and I'm scared. Okay. Well, so what Mary, our earlier caller, talked about the two minute rule, Patty, use it. I guess that's why we were supposed to talk about it tonight. It's a perfect time to use it. And when you're scared, remember. That's your spirit saying, hey, you're making stuff up, right? Because if it's right. not going to kill you right now, in the next two minutes, it's fake. You're making it up. So spirit is all, our spirits are all pure love. doesn't mean you have to love everybody and love every situation. It means you accept the situation as it is. So right now, you, you potentially have been exposed, right? Right. And then your brain goes down this black hole with the thoughts, with the scary thoughts, right? Well, my mother, I live with my mother, and that's what I'm concerned about. Not really okay. about me, 
So I'm your brain is about... going down. Your brain is going down all those scary thoughts about your mother, Patty. Right? Yeah. Right. So the bottom line is, is it is it going to kill you? We cannot affect anybody else's reality; only our own, with what our thoughts mm -hmm. are. So, mm -hmm. is it going to kill you in the next two minutes? Yes or no? No. No. Right. So. Right. What you do is you change to a different frequency. Now you can think, okay, I'm healthy. Everything's fine. My mom's going to be healthy. My mom's, you know, if I don't get it, my mom's not going to get it. All is well. If you have to do that a million times a day, Patty, do it. It's going to change your vibrational level to, to a higher level. It's going to make you feel better, and you're going to be on a different frequency bringing in thoughts. If you're bringing in thoughts that feel bad, use the two-minute rule. But do you think I have it? Do you think that I... I get a no, no, no. And, and last week, you want to hear something? Last Thursday, I actually had a dream that I had a 103 fever, and they told me that I have to put me in the hospital, but I was running home because I, I, cause it's like, how is my mom going to see me? So... Yeah. No, that's so, your fear. You know, in our right. dreams, we work out our fears. Yeah, you're right. good. So you, you're good. You don't, you're good. Okay. You're good. good. You know what? No. I'm putting a protective bubble around you. Everybody that's on this call, I'm putting a protective bubble around all of you. Everybody that's listening to the podcast, you all have protective bubbles too. Patty, can you're you good. Put a protective, uh, can, can you put a protective around my mom anyway? Because we went did. out a few times. I already Thank did. you. I already did. You're good. Use the two-minute rule. All right, I will. Thank you. Okay, thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, okay, let's see who's next. I believe it's uh, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, can you hear me? I can. How are you? How are you? I'm calling from D.C. We've spoken before. I'm calling about my knees again because I had another yeah. round of stem cell injections last week. And right. um, the last time I spoke with you, my right knee was inflamed, and then after working, I think you did something to remove it, and then just it came back even stronger now. So I'm trying to figure out, like, what the root of this inflammation is. And the doctor okay. can't figure it out. I'm hopeful the stem cells are still working, but I'm just not feeling any improvement. I'm almost feeling worse, really. Okay. Okay. Well, let me get you on my radar, and let's see what we can find, if we can figure out what's going on. So here comes my laser beam hooking into you in D.C. Got you shooting. And yeah, yeah, your right leg is really inflamed, your knee. Good heavens, girl. What's up with that? All right. Yeah, so, why is it? Yeah, I don't know. So I'm putting anti-inflammatory blue energy on there to see what's going on. You've got a little bit of an infection going on. I got antibiotic energy in there right now, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it will take care of it. You've got a little teeny bit of a bacterial infection going on. In that knee, I don't know why, but will a brace help it? He told me that I should start wearing this brace that I have. So I started wearing it. I didn't notice any improvement, but like, what, 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 what should I do now? Is it bad to walk on it? He said with the stem cells, no. I need to be walking. Yeah, I think you need to be walking. I think that's good, and um, the stem cells are working great. It looks really good. You're growing but I'm up. in so much pain. I'm, I, yeah. so I'm staying really yeah. positive that it's working, but I can't. So like, if it is an antibiotic, is there any like stuff, anything else I should do? So right pay attention. If it's if it's hot and um, hot to the touch, I would call your doctor and get an antibiotic called in. With that, I have encased in an antibiotic energy, which hopefully that will help. I think you've got a little infection going on in there. Okay. Okay, so I hope you feel better. Thank you. Okay, it's growing. You're growing new. You're growing new okay. stuff. You're doing good. Okay. okay. Thanks okay. for calling. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, let's see who else we got. I believe our next caller, is Susan. Hi, Susan. Oh, hi. Hi, Dewey. Good evening. Good evening to you. I'm All so right. excited. I'm just so excited. I hope I can talk right. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you calling from? Um, I'm in the outskirts of Detroit in the suburbs. Um, actually, I'm in Jackson. It's another okay. city, not as big as Detroit. Yeah. Okay. So 
I'm so excited um, to to talk with you. Um, yeah, I have had a malrotated um, lower bowel since I was born, is what the doctors told me, um, and it's all on my left side, and it seems to be getting um, it's, it's causing me more trouble as life as I grow older now. Um, it's um, it's it's always uh, it always feels like it's swollen. Um, my back, um, if it's not my you know my core in the front where the colon is on the left, it's my back that is um, mm -hmm. I have severe osteoporosis, and it's causing a lot of trouble. And it's all on my left side, so okay. um, it's really hard for me to exercise. Uh, I just can't make any progress. I haven't been able to. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's yeah. twisted, like you'd wring out a, uh, um, I've already got you on my radar, Susan. It looks like okay. how you wring out a washcloth, you know, after you use it. it, it like what? Like it, I'm sorry. It looks like it's twisted to me, like that. It like how you'd wring out a washcloth. So what, yeah. I'm, yeah. what I'm, you know, to get the water out of it after you wash your face or whatever. Um, I'm, what I'm watching is I'm watching it unwind. This is a healing that's happening on it. I'm watching it unwind like you would unwind a washcloth after you twist it to wring it out. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. watching it unwind, and I'm watching. Ooh. All right, so I'm watching a little quick energetic surgery happen where it's been twisted for so long that it's almost part of it's been stretched out. So I watched part of it get removed and then sewn back together. Ooh. So that it you know, will. Wow. Does that make sense? Well, what's what's interesting is I never heard anybody talk about a mel rotator before, until I was watching this 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 movie the other day, and this little boy had, um, you know, he was going into surgery, and because he had a mel rotated, um, colon as well, and and the doctors told the mom and dad that it was it, it was partially dead, and now yeah. you. You're, yeah. I think that's what you're saying. It's, yeah. it's, it's, like, yeah. it's not well. It's been like that all my so life. It's, so when it was twisted, it it's like it didn't have the blood supply and everything. Like if you again, I keep I keep getting the analogy of twisting a washcloth to wring out the water. And so I watched a, what they call a dissection of your colon, and I watched a part of it get taken out and then I watch the two ends get joined back together. And so now what I'm watching is I'm watching, um, you know, stuff flow through it and, um, and I've got stem cell energy around where that was rejoined so that'll regenerate the tissue. What happens, Susan, with these healings is they happen on the energetic level and then they, they integrate into our bodies. So that can happen instantly it may take days, weeks, months. It may need some kind of additional care, like you may need surgery. But it's happened on the energetic level, and then it's your spirit's choice how it wants to integrate it into your body so that you can experience whatever it is you want to explore in this lifetime. And that's not just with this. That's with everything. You know, what kind of car do you drive? Where do you live? That kind of stuff. So... Um, I think it would it would make sense for us. Do we have a private session scheduled? Did you schedule a private session with me? Um, I haven't yet, but my I am going to. I had to yeah. had to wait for the right time. I'm on my way, and I'm close every day, so it'll be okay. soon. It'll be in the month right. of April. Wonderful, wonderful. I look forward to talking yeah. with you, and then I'll have you for a whole hour, and we can really figure out what's going on and do some. Do some more healings oh, on you, but this is a this is a big one that you just had real quickly um, this evening. Yes. So I hope that helps. Oh yes, yes. Thank you so much, Julia. You bet. I look forward to having time with you. Thank you. Thanks, again. Call, thanks nice for evening. calling. Bye bye. Okay. You too. You're welcome. Alrighty, let's see who's next. I believe it's Miss Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Lisa, get me off mute. Are you there? Hello. Hi, Lisa. Oh, there you are. Hi, girl. Can you hear me? I can. Hello. How are you? Oh, okay. I'm yeah. Good. Where are you oh, calling yeah. from? We'll see Washington. Washington State. Washington. Okay, terrific. You got a question for me? Oh, my. 
gosh. Well, I have, I've been diagnosed with lung cancer, metastasized oh to my brain. Oh, yeah. geez. But I'm on the medicine, a targeted medicine, and I'm doing really well. Everything's right. stable and shrinking. Uh-huh. And I believe in complete healing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so whatever you see here, you can tell me or help me would be amazing. Okay. All right. Come my laser beam from sweet home Alabama up to you. You guys used to be, you know, ground zero, but I think it switched to New York now. Washington was was really uh, having more more of the coronavirus cases than anybody. All right, got you. Shooting energy from your feet up to you. Okay, so I'm doing a DNA. I'm watching a DNA healing. Like, did you hear me talk about that with Kimberly with her daughter Grace earlier? Did you hear that? Yeah, but I didn't recall. Yeah. Yeah. So I see seven strands of DNA that have come out of a chromosome with you. They're getting reconfigured very fast. Again, those letters ATCG, they represent nucleic acids. One strand of DNA, DNA is the recipe that tells the cells how to behave. One strand of DNA can uh, have hundreds of thousands of letters on it. And I'm watching them get rearranged in warp speed, like as you, if you've ever seen computer code go flying across the screen, that's what I'm watching. So uh, once those strands are reconfigured and the mutations are corrected, then they snap back in to the chromosome. You've got two left to go. And um, do we schedule a private session with me so we can spend an hour working on, on uh, healing you, helping okay. you to heal from some of this stuff? All right, askjulieryan.com is where you can schedule oh. a, a private oh. session, okay? And okay. Uh, so the last one just snapped back in. So that I, yeah. I use this DNA healing with cancer clients every day, and it, and it really seems to work. But again, like what I was telling, uh, I believe, who did, who did I just talk to? Like I was telling Susan, the, um, the healing happens on the energetic level up to your spirit to integrate it into your body. However, it's going to help you explore whatever it is you came here to experience. So um, mm-hmm. schedule a private session, then we'll have an hour to chat. Okay. Oh, thank Thanks you. for calling. Yeah. You bet. Hang in mm-hmm. there. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay, let's see who's next. I believe it's Darcy. Hi, Darcy. Hi, Darcy. Hi. Hi. How are you? There you are. Hi. Hi. There you are. How are you? Go. San Francisco. So I don't know about a month ago, and we spent a lot of time. Um, you were working with my mother-in-law, and I just thought I would check in and see if I don't know if she's going to let you scan her because she's kind of in and out of uh, lucidity with her Alzheimer's. But yeah, I thought. Okay. Is there anything in particular you want me to check for her? Remind me of her name, Darcy. Oh, her name is Betty. Betty. That's right. All right. And anything in particular? What did she tell us last time? Well, first we we tried to scan her, and she said, "I don't understand. I don't know." You know. And then and then I got <laughs> her to listen to your show, and so she was intrigued because she was a nurse, so she kind of doesn't really kind of understand yeah. that the stuff. Right. And so then she said, okay, and we, we did a lot of uh, work on her um, boo-boo that's on her shin, her uh, open okay. wound. That's and right. We also I do remember adjusted that. Yeah. her. Yeah, but she's had a UTI since then, and she's just oh, real yeah. out of it. All right. um, Sometimes when they get UTIs, when elderly people get UTIs, it can make them really, you know, their yeah, brains. It, so it, it really can mess them up, I mean, yeah. uh, mentally. Mm-hmm. I remember that happened to my dad. He got a UTI. Yeah. He was in the hospital for something. He got a UTI. And he was like, it was July. And I flew up to see him in Columbus. And I said, okay, Dad, I'll see you in the morning. And he goes, okay, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and I said, okay, Happy New Year. It was like uh, July 10th or something. So, okay. Yeah. So, I got gotcha. you. Been there on that one. We had a laugh out of that. But later, after he got well, I said, Dad, you, you, you wished me Merry Christmas in the middle of July. He said, I did not. I said, oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> so there's so, hope, yeah. Wondering oh, if yeah, she's absolutely. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So I've connected to you, Darcy, from you. I've connected to Miss Betty 
I'm still going to ask her, Miss Betty, I'm with Darcy. Is it okay if I scan you energetically? Yes. She's okay. saying I'm a skeptic. Well, that's yeah. appropriate. But yeah. she's a skeptic. You know, I'm yeah. a skeptic, too. That's appropriate. All right. So, uh, yeah, she's got a big-time UTI going on. All right. So antibiotic energy in, in her bladder, in her urethra, all of that, that'll help with that. Let me come back up and see. So it was on her shin of her right leg. Is that what I'm remembering? Uh, it's, let's see. I'm trying to think. I think it's on her left. Okay. Because the energy went to her right leg. So mm -hmm. I can just report what I get. So maybe it's her left leg, but I'm, more, I'm working on it on the right leg. And uh, it's healed since the last time. It looks like a pressure okay, sore. Yeah. So I put that tachyderm on it, as you requested, God. and you were recommending. Yeah. And I think that's really helping. So, okay. So it's right. still pussy and bleeding a little, but yeah, I'm assuming that it's just healing from the inside now. What? What Darcy is referring to, Tegaderm, is uh, it's like fake skin. They use it to cover IVs with it. And Darcy, you may remember me telling you this, but I, I want everybody else to, to hear this story. When I first started selling hospitals, like in 1981, right out of college, one of the first products I sold was this dressing. And it's mm -hmm. called a moisture vapor permeable membrane dressing. And what it does is it covers the skin and it covers the nerve endings and so I saw all the clinical studies on it and and it keeps the wound warm with help helps with pain but it keeps the wound from having to, to form a scab and then mm -hmm. the cells come up from underneath the scab Darcy remember we were talking about that yeah and so when you've got it on especially if it's a wound that's taking a while to heal it looks like there's all this pus and stuff that's on there yeah. but it's not what it is is it's the white blood cells the leukocytes that are coming to make sure it's the body's own defense mechanisms that are working as long as she doesn't have inflammation around the perimeter of yeah. that wound darcy you're golden yeah. on yeah. that okay okay and then if, she, if more she gets more antibiotic for the if she gets inflammation, you know, then then you need to change change it. But they started using that dressing on burn patients because you know those mm -hmm. that's so hard to heal, and and they found that it really reduced the pain and it helped them heal in a fraction of the time. So keep on with that. She's on antibiotics now. Well, she ended a couple of days ago and we went and refilled it. I thought I would maybe have her take more just to, just yeah. to kind of keep it going. They think? did refill it? Yeah, they refilled it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would do another round of antibiotics. I would also have them call in a prescription of Nystatin for her, mm -hmm. N-Y-S-T-A-T-I-N. Okay. It's an antifungal. It will help protect her gut from yeast because when you take an antibiotics, it just decimates the gut. I know. So get her some nice statin to have our doctor call it in. They like to call in Diflucan because mm -hmm. that's what the drug reps tell them about. Diflucan, one of the side effects is death. So my statin just stays in the GI tract, doesn't go systemic, it's been on the market for like 50 years. It's what they give babies when they have thrush. So mm -hmm. get her some nice statin to go with the antibiotics. But she's, okay. that wound is healing. It's looking better. Okay, great. Good news. Thanks for calling. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. All righty, let's go to Miss Gail next. Hi, Gail. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Very nice um, to talk to you. Nice to talk with you. Where are you calling us from? Uh, actually, Buffalo, New York. All right. Well, how are you holding up up there? So far, so good. Not bad. Good. Yeah. Good. How may I help you this evening? Well, I do have a question for you. Um, my husband had an ankle replacement done, and it's been about 15 months now, and he's ran into infection after infection after uh -oh. infection. So yeah. we're getting to the point where he's gone through 30 treatments of hyperbaric, and now they're using and um, dried placenta. Mm. And it's still not healing. So, um, okay. Just wanting to know where 
I mean, they feel that the infection is in the implant. I do too. That's what I've already got them on my radar. That's what I'm seeing. So the implants are made out of titanium, Gail, and they have, you know, everything that feels smooth is not really smooth because it has little teeny weeny little indentations. And I am, I've invented orthopedic implant devices. So I'm pretty familiar with these. And every once in a while, some stuff can get in there. Uh, are they going to redo his ankle? I mean, it's, well, I think take the, redo the implant. Well, what they're planning on doing, we have to go to one more specialist, and um, they are possibly going to have to take that out and um, yeah. pack it and fuse the yeah. ankle. Oh. Uh, I think the implant, I think, what I'm doing is um, I've got antibiotic energy on the implant itself. So imagine it has these little microscopic divots in it, and that's where I'm getting it staph. I don't know if he's tested positive for staph, but that's what I'm getting. Oh, he's had staph and MRSA. Oh, jeez, girl. Holy moly. All right, I'm getting staph infection. Um, okay, so I've got super intense antibiotic energy, imagine it looks like bubble wrap, <laughs> you know, like a collar that's inflated around his ankle to help with that. Uh, I, I get it's in his best interest to get that thing removed. I know that sounds like a nightmare, but that's what I'm getting right now. That's what we, we have a gut feeling, but it was it's just so weird because where the incision originally was that was taking forever to heal and mm -hmm. it's almost to the point where it's not even like two drops that are left to heal so that's where I'm not sure the infection's still there or I mean it's just been he's been on an antibiotic right along so mm -hmm. get him on get him on some nice statin too like I was just talking with Darcy N-Y-S-T-A-T-I-N. It's an mm -hmm. antifungal that's found in the ground. It kills yeast on contact. Get him on some of that. And then the other thing I would do too, Gail, is there's a gut biome test. If you email me, Julie, at AskJulieRyan.com, I'll send you a link. Anybody listening, I'll send you the link too. It's for half off. I would get his gut biome tested. It's a fancy name for a poop test. You can do it at home without a doctor. Food is the best medicine to heal the gut, which is where the immune system is. I, w I would do that test on him. Let's find out what his superfoods are to heal his gut. Let's find out what the foods are for him to avoid. Let's get his immune system, you know, back in shape because for him to go back into surgery with an immune system that's whacked, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Is he able to walk on it? Um, somewhat, yeah. I mean, he's okay. you know, he, right now he's using it like a cane and walker. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it, I don't think he'll ever, you know, right now it's just to the point where I know he's frustrated. I know he doesn't want to go through another surgery because it's going to be t at least two more surgeries. Right, yeah. All right, I would work on his gut biome. Mm -hmm. I would work on getting his immune system in robust shape and then mm -hmm. see what happens because this antibiotic energy that's on it, it's powerful. And, um, you know, let's just see what happens. Do a private session with me if you can. Let's okay. spend an hour working on him. And, okay. um, and you know, we'll tell him we'll, we'll reverse engineer him. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what's going on with that. All right. You know, I hope that health. helps. Are you seeing anything with my health? Cause I've been let me... Let me come back to you. I've got, I'm have got. i going to grab somebody else okay. here real fast in the time left. But thanks for calling in. Thank I can you. do both of you when, on a private session. We can okay. talk about anything you want during that hour. It's your hour. All right. 50 Thank things, you. whatever. Okay. Thanks, Gail. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's see what else. Who else do we have? I think we have uh, Liz, the second Liz. Hi, Liz. Hi, great to talk to you. Uh, great to talk to you. Well. Thank, Thank you. You too. I'm Where are you? I am in the Detroit area of Michigan as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm calling about my son. So I don't yeah. know if you can uh, get in touch with my son, Matthew, who lives in the Detroit area. He and okay. I are estranged. And just during this tricky time, he um, is overcoming, I hope, uh, his addiction to both drugs and alcohol. 
And I just am curious about how he's doing and if there's potential for restoration. He is very angry with me. I'm not sure why. Um, and I don't know if you can even see if there's healing in there or maybe this time let's, would help us heal. Let's talk with him. We can talk to his spirit because I connect with, uh, with spirit, both alive and deceased. Again, it's every, but every spirit has a frequency, so we just mm -hmm. connect with his spirit. So let's just have a little conversation with him. Do you have me on speaker by any chance on your phone? Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm oh. hearing feedback. There much you go. better. So much better. Thank you, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I was hearing myself. I was hearing myself. <laughs> All right. So, Matthew. I've connected to you, Liz, from you. I'm watching the laser beam. Go to Matthew. All right, questions for him. So wondering if there is healing for the two of us, if forgiveness and love and a future for our relationship. I get, I get absolutely. I get he's still, he's still in his addiction. <clears throat> he's, mm. still, uh, he's still in the middle of his addiction. So um, he's saying he, he's estranged from you because he, he knows he's disappointing to you and he feels mm -hmm. that if he's not in touch with you that you won't, have to, you won't have to deal with it as much because, you know, you're, it's not in your face. He's saying mm -hmm. that he, he's told me three times now I don't want to disappoint her. Oh, I just, Does that make I just sense? want to help. It does. I just want to help, though. Yeah. Remember, I don't know, if hopefully you, you heard earlier when I was saying that we can't affect anybody else's reality. We can only affect our own. And the reason right. is we can't control anybody else's thoughts. So the thing about when you're in a situation like you're in, what I have found and, and, and working with literally thousands of people for the last several years is that if you come to a place, like what I was telling Patty from Queens, use the two-minute rule when you're feeling bad. Did you hear about that when we talked about that earlier? I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Use that. And remember that our spirits incarnate to have an experience. We want to explore things. So Matthew's spirit wants to explore addiction. Because if he didn't, mm -hmm. if it didn't, he wouldn't be exploring addiction. And if you can Stay neutral. I always say stay in Switzerland. That's what I teach people in my class. We, always, we laugh. We say stay in Switzerland. In the spirit world, mm -hmm. nothing's good, nothing's bad. It's just an experience. In the human world, we see things as good and bad, especially as mothers when our children are, no matter how old they are, when they've got mm -hmm. something going on, you know, we think, oh, we want to try and help them and fix it and all of that. But if you can remember that this is what his spirit wants to experience and just stay neutral on it, stay, I love you. I mean, you can talk to him telepathically, say mm -hmm. something to him either aloud or in your head. It, that's how we connect to spirit. We think of a person and that immediately tunes us to their channel that their spirit mm -hmm. frequency is broadcasting on. He'll get the information. He may not be cognizant of it, but he'll get it. Send him loving thoughts. Talk with him. You know, all of that. But he's staying away from you because because he doesn't want to hurt you and he doesn't want to disappoint you. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I'll keep telling him I love him. Thank you. Consider consider taking my class. We talk about this, and and in oh. my class, Mary talked about it. We mm -hmm. we learn to connect with spirit. When you connect with spirit, you guys, you can do all this stuff. I do. I learned how to do all this stuff. I teach people how to do this stuff. You connect to spirit, you got access to whatever you want. You can do healings. You can talk to deceased loved ones. You can talk to anybody you want that's alive or deceased. Mm -hmm. You can scan animals. You can do spirit guide stuff. You can do past life stuff. It's all just connecting to that frequency. And so consider, consider that, Liz, and anybody else Absolutely. that's listening that might be interested. Yep. Just I'm ask julieryan.com. You'll see it. Okay. Good Thank luck. You. Okay. Stay well. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Let's see who's next. I believe it's Lois. Hi, Lois. Lois, can I get you? Let's see if I can get you. Are you muted? Hello, there Julie. You, there you are. Hi, Hi there. 
<laughs> Hi. Oh, yeah. Wow. Huh? I'm great. Well, we're, yeah, we're, we're you're calling us from? <laughs> from Reno, Nevada. Okay, terrific. Got a question for me? Well, I just wanted to ask a question about, um, I had a dream the other night and I had, it was more of a visit from mm -hmm. an old family friend. Um, mm -hmm. She would have been like a mother figure to me, but um, I've been dealing or taking um, Suzanne Giesman's course so it's in, for yeah. mediumship and yeah. I feel like I'm still just such an infantile medium, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so this visit though that I had was very um, intense and um, mm -hmm. so real, you know, and mm -hmm. when I mm -hmm. saw her, um, this person, she, I just gave her the, she gave me the biggest hug and made me mm -hmm. feel so loved and it's somebody that passed many, many, many years ago and I have not even really thought a whole lot about her recently, but when she was mm -hmm. there, it was very, very strong and I just um, wonder how do you know? How do you know whether it's, you know, I feel like it was real, you know. It was real. Yeah. How you know <laughs> is you, when it, when it feels so real, when the colors, it's almost like they're in super high depth. The colors are really right. bright and really sharp and, and you can experience feelings, like you experience the feeling of her hugging you or sometimes yes. people that hair on the back of their neck or on their arms will stand up. That's right. a visit. That's like, a visit. I was just bawling so, in the... Yeah, <laughs> no, you're, I mean, you're right. Up it was a I visit. Was yeah, mm -hmm. you're doing good. Doing yeah. good. So how okay. you communicate with her, and I know you're, you're learning this in your class, but here's how right. I teach it is. You ask a question uh -huh. or you make a statement, and they're going to answer you telepathically mm -hmm. instantly. If you think about it for more than okay. a second, that's going to be your brain talking to you. The other right. thing to remember, Lois, is be super specific in how you how you okay. ask a question exactly. if you're looking for guidance because they're really literal. Right. So I hope that okay. helps. But Very good. thanks for calling. I need to run because we're back. Well, thank you. That's yeah, okay. Kaboom. I'm meeting with you next week, so Yay! I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Me too. Okay. okay. Thanks for calling. All right. Thank you, Julie. Bye. Bye. -bye. All right, everybody. That's it. We got a lot of people on tonight. I think I got 12 people on. That's that's pretty good in an hour. And um, stay well. I'm so impressed with what our federal and state and local governments are doing. I think they're thinking outside of the box and creating amazing things in a short period of time. Follow their directions. Use the two-minute rule. Thanks, Mary, for calling in and asking about that. And next week, same place, same time, and, and look forward to talking with you. Have a good week, everybody. Hang in there. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Twitter at Ask Julie Ryan and like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. For information on how you can ask Julie your question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com.